All right, folks, so we've got James Ford here on the show. We've just done a podcast with him, about 45 minutes of pure gold. So head over there to tradingnut.com. You'll find that. There should be a link under the video. James, over to you. You're just about to walk through something we discussed on the show, which was around market structure and how you sort of see it and a few other things if you want to throw them in there. Sure. Thank you, Cam. Um, So, yeah, guys, check out the podcast. Um, thank you for watching this video as well. Now, one thing, guys, that I'm, I, I keep trading very, very simple. And uh, for me, the base of the market is market structure. Now, it's the flow of the market. We know that the market flows with higher highs and higher lows. And we know that the market flows with lower highs and lower lows. Now, when you're looking at a market like this, it can seem quite complicated. Now, for me, it's very important to do something which I call boxing off price. Um, Now, boxing off price to me is uh, very important. Now, there's not always going to be a trading opportunity. Okay, that's something that you need to understand. There will not always be a trading opportunity. However, when a market is flowing, okay, I'm just going back in history just to find a nice flow for you guys. When a market is flowing, the market flows in a nice structure technique. Now, as I said, it's not going to be perfect every time. But what can we see here? We can see a low in the market. This market then broke this low and came back up to retest this zone, okay? The market then in this area showed a bit of consolidation, showed a bit of selling pressure. Let me just zoom in so you guys can really see what I'm talking about, okay? So then what happened from this point? The market pushed off from here. Now, if I just copy this and we just add this onto here, what can we then see happened? Well, the market from here pushed back up, broke this area, pulled back, retested this area, and then continued off to the downside. Now, this is what I call structure retesting structure, which is the key of my trading. It really is the base of my trading when the structure comes back to retest it. Now, let's just take a look here. Okay, let's take a look here. What happened here? The market showed a real quick retest. Okay, so we saw the market low, pull back, continue, new low. The market did spike into this area, but did we see a pullback? No. Do I care? Not really, because it just means that there was potentially no trading opportunity. And one thing I would say is it's very important to know when to be in the market and when not to be in the market. Okay, so that's something that's very important. Then down here, what we can see is the market then did the same again, where we then saw the market show a low. We saw the breakthrough, we saw the pullback, and then we eventually saw the push to the downside where the market formed what we call a double bottom. So the market down here formed a double bottom. So we've now got nice market structure flow to the downside, which we can see right here. Nice flow to the downside, but then this downside move broke out to the upside, which you should be able to see when the market broke out and we broke through this lower high point. So the market broke through this lower high point, but we're not looking at buying immediately after the market broke this lower high point. What we're going to do is we're going to focus on this point of structure. So we're focusing on this point of structure and what happened after this area of structure. The market came back into this area of structure and then showed the push off of this area to the upside. And what we can then take a look at is what happened after the market formed this new high. Now, remember, guys, it's never going to be pinpoint because if it's pinpoint, it would be too easy. And it's not always going to just be easy, which is why it therefore takes time for your eyes to adapt to this and to be able to see it. And this is what thousands of hours on the charts will actually bring you. So what can we therefore see happened? From this point, the market rallied and formed a new high. After this high, the market came back into this area right here and did what? Showed us a rejection. From this rejection, what did we see? We saw the market form a new high. Okay, so after this, we may have been looking at this and we may have been saying to ourselves, right, will this market now come back to retest this high point right here? This high point right here. And sorry, this high point right here. Will the market come back and retest this area? Well, no, the market fell through. After the market fell through, we saw a pullback. That highlights to me that there's potential of the market to change direction. So when we then see this low point down here, we then take a look to see what happened from this point. Okay. Now, from this point, the market technically showed a breakthrough, pullback into the zone. Remember, everything in trading is a zone. It's never exact. And then from this point, we saw the push to the downside. Now, from this push to the downside, the market unfortunately came back into the previous low and formed a double bottom. We saw a push to the upside. We then saw the market range. So what I do when I see the market range is I just purely and simply box off this range in area. So once I've boxed off the range in area and I'm happy, what I then do is I'm then patient 
Who cares how long the range goes on for? It could go on for a month. It really doesn't bother me how long it's going to go on for. So I allow the market to play out. And then what do I look for? I look for a nice violation of the previous structure. The previous structure point right here, previous structure point right here. We violated it. We then come back up into this area right here. And what do we see happen from here? We saw the push off to the downside. Yeah, the market did come back for a second rejection. Doesn't matter. We could have been stopped out of break even. Break even's better than the loss. Um, but we could have then potentially got into the market once again. And then from this point, what do we see happen? We see the market run off to the downside. And this plays out over and over again. It's just always about just looking at the market structure and really learning the market structure. Um, and we can just take a look into current price action right now. Um, and we can see that the market did the exact thing right here. Okay, bottom of structure, broke through, came back. This was unfortunately a wick. And uh, I'll just quickly show you uh, a position that I was looking at taking yesterday. Uh, and it was very unfortunate because I had a market entry order. I don't always take live entries. So I had a market entry order. So let's just quickly run through this one, if that's okay, Cam. Yeah, go for it, mate. So uh, a boxed off price up here. We saw the market break out. The market broke out. It didn't come back into this region doesn't bother me. I'll wait till the market decides to. Then we had this area of structure point just through here. And I had my market entry order literally about this area right here yesterday. And I was looking to target down into these previous lows. It may have been a bit lower. I don't have the exact uh, full markings. Now there's, I don't just have a blank chart like this. I have my support and resistance lines, maybe a Fibonacci. Uh, I'm not too much of a big fan of trend lines because there's a million and one ways you can draw a trend line, whether you cut wicks, whether you don't cut wicks. So personally, I'm not a massive fan of them. Um, but if you are, stick to what you do. Um, so yeah, I had a market entry order pretty much back at the area of structure here, looking for the market to retest. Um, and then we saw the market spike in and it missed me by about two pips. And then the market completely sunk off to the downside. Um, it happens, as I say all the time, who cares? Mm. OK, because at the end of the day, I know there's always going to be another trade. Um, and that's just purely and simply me using this area of structure to be retested. OK, and you can go back through the charts and you can just take a look like you. You'll start to see it happen over and over again. So we had this area of structure where which we can box off on the chart right here. So we had this area of structure where the market was trading in. What happened after this market broke through? We had a solid close below forming a lower low. We come back into this area and then we pushed off to the downside. We came back for a double top, then we pushed off to the downside. And it's just really about keeping it as simple as possible. And it's not going to happen every time. And when it doesn't happen, that, mean, that may mean that there's no trading opportunity. But just take a look at them lows. We broke through, we came back, double top, we pushed off. And this is, this is my trading back right here when the market didn't come back in and show a perfect entry and the market broke above. It just means there's no trading opportunity and you're not always going to be in a trade. So when I said in the podcast that I'm, I wait um, for the market to show great opportunity, one that I'm actually watching right now is GB pound USD. And we've actually shown the breakout, which is great. Um, the market, I actually had it, I had it boxed off where I had the high point right here. Um, nice to see that we've actually shown a breakout whilst we've been doing this. And I've now seen the low point. So now what I'm looking for is the market to purely and simply potentially come back and form a lower high to then continue to the downside and potentially now run off to the downside. Right, yeah. And that's really as simple as I keep it. And you can go back in history and you can just take a look at how the structure just continuously flows. And are you looking for, as soon as it closes below, are you looking for for entries or are you waiting for it to consolidate below a bit? Um, no, I'm waiting for the market to firmly. So this right now, could we only have five minutes of the candle, but if this happened in the first half an hour, the second half an hour could push back above. So I'm waiting for the market to actually close below. If it continues down, it doesn't really bother me either because I will then just wait for it to come back to then potentially get in. If I miss it, I don't mind because I'll then look for something like this down here where I'll then look for an entry further on. One thing about me and what people say about me is that I'm a very patient trader and I will always just wait for the setup to come. If there's no trade in the week, it doesn't bother me because if I don't have that fear of missing out because I always know that there will eventually be a trade in the market. Mm. Um, and it's all about forecasting. So just to quickly run you through, when the market was in this consolidation area here before it actually broke out, I wasn't fixed on the market break into the downside. 
I said to myself, the market could form a higher high, higher low and push to the upside into previous highs. That is always a potential. So I'm not going to eliminate that as a potential in the market. That could very well happen. But yet the market could also break to the downside, form a lower low, then a lower high, then push to the downside. Or the market could do what else it likes to do and continue to range. And if it does that, then we just remain patient. So it's purely and simply just keeping it patient, keeping it simple, being patient and letting the market dictate to me where it's going to go. Now, GB pound USD has pretty much dictated to me that it wants to continue to the downside. So I'll now look at this market and say to myself, right, are we going to come back into this area for a potential trade? If we do, great. If we fly back above, it doesn't bother me. I'll remain further patient. Cool. Brilliant. And um that is my insight into market structure and how to just really keep it simple. And I'm sure from what you guys can see, what I have on the chart right now is nothing. It's just pure and simple, a blank chart. And if you go back through and just start to read price action, this isn't just on the, uh, this isn't just on this time frame, guys. This is on the daily time frame. This is on every time frame. You just got to take into account that everything's a zone. And by the time you continue to look at the low, Break through the low, lower low, lower high back in this region, and then we push off to the downside. Superb. Look, that's absolutely fantastic stuff uh, and a great description of market structure there. Guys, so James, what's the best way for everyone to get hold of you? Um, well, you can uh, contact me on Instagram at Technical Effects, or you could uh, check out our YouTube channel. You can drop me an email at james at technicaleffects.co.uk. Um, and yeah, that is how you can get in contact with me. Brilliant. Well, look, thank you very much for coming on the show, James. And guys, do remember there's a podcast as well. There should be a link below the video. And remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel to get more videos like this and also hear James's full interview as well. So, um, James, thank you once again. Um, and I hope you have a great day over there and we all get out of this lockdown and anytime soon. Um, and uh, have a fantastic rest of the trading week. Thank you very much, Cam. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, Thanks for a great interview and thanks for allowing me to jump on the charts and share some charts with you.